Welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to be making a goat milk soap using this fragrance from Bee Scented Rosemary Mint. This smells fantastic. Uh, it's, it's just crisp and rosemary and minty and everything it should smell like it's in there and it's a nice strong fragrance which is great. So obviously I'm going to be using goat milk for my liquid portion. Um, I do have some organic rosemary um, that I might put down a little on the top. Not a lot, but because uh, it's kind of pine needly and sharp, but it's so pretty and it smells great. So I might use a little of that on the top in small portions. For the color, I want to use this. I have Hello Spring and um, it's still springtime even though here in Tennessee my temperatures feel like summer. It's like high 90s today and humid. So Hello Spring. <laughs> um, this green, it's it's just a beautiful green. It's not necessarily minty or rosemary color, but it's so happy and I wanted to use it. So it's going in this soap today. Uh, I think I'm just gonna swirl the top and do the rosemary. I don't think I'm gonna do any piping. I'm still keeping my options open. But uh, with that being said, I'm gonna pull everything together and get my goat milk prepped and let's come back and make some wonderful rosemary and mint goat milk soap. So I've got all my oils melted and ready to go and I have my fragrance oil in here, my rosemary and mint. I've got my goat milk here um, and I'm gonna add my dry additives in here and I also decided I'm going to use um, friend green clay in the green portion along with my Hello Spring. I just, you know, the green clay is so gorgeous and it kind of goes with the rosemary mint theme. So I'm going to go ahead and add my organic colloidal oats here and my kale and clay, which will go on everything, and then just the green will have the French green. Get this blended in and let it anchor in with the fragrance. So I've let my um, kale and clay and oats sit in here with the fragrance and the oils and just sort of anchor for a good couple of minutes. Now I'm going to add my goat milk and I wanted to show you, I was in a rush, I added my lye very quickly and it has some little scorched bits in there. I'm going to run it through the strainer. Um, this is fresh, raw, organic goat milk, unpasteurized, it's raw, farm fresh. So um, it does have a lot of the natural creams and things in there and it can scorch but the strainer will catch all that. But I just wanted to show that to you. That's why I have the strainer up here. Um, in my goat milk lye solution, I did put a teaspoon of titanium dioxide. Because again, I rushed it, it got real yellow. Um, if you go very slow with your milk, if you have it pre-frozen to either a slushy or in cubes, and you go super slow, you can actually do it without any scorching or anything. Um, <laughs> I'm just not that patient. <laughs> so I know some ladies who make goat milk soap and they're so patient and they go so slow adding the lye and it comes out beautiful. So if you're a patient person, you can do it. You don't have to rush. But the strain will just catch all those little scorched bits and we'll move on. I am gonna be hand stirring this uh, just to make sure we're staying on the uh, workable side and then I'll uh, stick blend it when we get it all split off. And the goal is to sort of do a drop swirl, run the hanger through it, and I'd like to just do a little swirlies on top and maybe put those um, rosemary buds or rosemary, I think it's technically a leaf. Those little needles are called leaves, although they look like pine needles to me, but put those down on top. They smell fantastic and uh, they'll just pop right off when you use the bar. Got that in there and now I'm going to just hand stir this to a nice emulsion and we'll split off. Mm, that rosemary mint is, it's fresh and um, savory. I like it. If you're not into sweet fragrances, I know, I, I mean, I love a good foodie bar soap. I really do. I love juicy citruses and sweets and stuff. But um, if you want something that's not necessarily masculine and not sweet, this is almost a savory scent. I think it's a very good unisex fragrance. All right, that's looking good. So let's go ahead and pour off from a green. And we can pour a nice amount since it's just these two colors is all we got going on. Put a 
nice heaping teaspoon of the French green clay. And then my Hello Spring. This is such a pretty color. I'll do, yeah, we'll do a teaspoon of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just run my stick blender in lightest to darkest and uh, we'll see how it behaves here. And I tap it to get the air bubbles out and then stick blend. Not a lot, I'm just going to do a little here. I don't want it to get too thick, but I, you know, I want a nice trace on it today. Let's see if I can show you. Okay, so this um, trace is when you put your stick blender or your spoon up and you circle it around and you can see the trails left. This isn't at trace yet. It's pourable, it's emulsed. I could go ahead and pour this, but it's very liquidy. Um, if you want an intricate wispy swirl, this would be a good time to pour it. But if you want a little more defined swirl, which I'm going for today, I'm gonna to keep stick blending here and stop and I'll circle it. And now I can see, I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but you can see little trails that are sitting on top. And that means I've reached a light trace. If you have thick trails or you can actually see a scoop, then you have a medium to thick trace. So, jump over here. Maybe I can show you in this better with the color. Get the air bubbles out. Alright, smaller containers usually come up to trace faster also, just because they blend quicker. So let me see if I can show you. Are we there? All right, I'm gonna pull up real close. I'm gonna pull it up and go, and you can see just the faintest trail on there. It's a very light trace, but that's what I want. I don't know if you can see that or not. The mold over here. Make sure these are pushed down. These molds from Workshop Heritage are fantastic. Um, love them. But the molds, you have to get them in the corner, otherwise you can get little rounded corners. So I really push it down, make sure it's set in there really good. I'll just start alternating colors as we pour. It's been about 24 hours and uh, let's get into this wonderful rosemary mint. It just smells pretty. I love how this color came out on top. Can't wait to get in here. Let's get into these wonderful goat milk soaps 
and I'm cutting them on the side so that the rosemary won't make too much drag marks through. Oh, these are so pretty and just simple. They smell really fresh and um, yeah, that's pretty. I like the color, the green clay and the Hello Spring. I think that came out really lovely. So I'll show you how I clean up my bars. Um, this does have botanicals, so I just sort of bop it and make sure the loose ones are off. And then I take my vegetable peeler and I just bevel the sides like this. Um, I cut these this morning, so it's been about, you know, three or so hours before I go ahead and come in. So I cut them, wait a few hours, and then they're nice and dry for stamping and beveling. So it just makes a nice smooth edge on it. And then I pick a side. These are my tall skinny, so I do it on the side. For a standard size, I do my stamp on the front. But um, I have 91% rubbing alcohol that I have spritzed this with. It helps it release. You don't need to do that, but I find that it releases from the soap bar very well. And then I just do a couple taps till I can feel that it's sunk in a little, not too much. And there it is, it gives me a nice crisp indentation. So the sides are beveled and that is a finished bar, other than curing, obviously. So that's how they are. Um, yeah, so these will cure for four to six weeks. These ones probably five weeks I'll do before I put them up on the website. And this little stamp here, there are several to choose from. This one is, I'll put the link down below. I got it from Etsy and it is specifically for soap. It's a hard plastic resin and the imprint on it, this is my logo that I sent them, it's a little bit taller so that you can get a nice um, crisp you know, indentation on your soap. So that's how I do it. So everything's already beveled and cleaned up and uh, now I'm gonna spritz my stamp with my rubbing alcohol it doesn't have to be saturated but um, and it, it dries up really quick so it's gonna make your soap wet when you use it but don't worry about that it'll it just evaporates off very quickly and I do one little stamp and kind of feel it and see how firm these are pretty firm so it's gonna take a good whack to get it in there but um, it's just sort of a feel. And then I just, when it starts to dry out, I go ahead and spritz it again. a little bit wet but um, that'll just dry off and that's how I do it.